Hello and welcome to my very trusting friend's Audi RS3. I say very trusting because not only is he letting us take this out on the road for a rip, but he's also the man behind the camera, so he's going to be fully subjected to whatever we put his car through. So what adds an extra bit of spice to this video is this is no ordinary Audi RS3. It's had a stage 2 MRC tune, all the associated hardware, so that's Scorpion exhaust, forge intake, bigger intercooler, turbo elbow, and it's what? 540 brake horsepower? 700 newton metres. 700 newton metres, there you go. I remember growing up with F430s, Gallardos, fully fledged supercars, and they weren't making those numbers. Insane. Anyway, let's get into it. Here's something else that makes this car a wee bit different as well. It's a saloon, this added bit of mass here, and actually, I think these look a fair bit more handsome than the hatchbacks, if I do say so. There's a look of the B7 RS4 to me, probably because proportionally, these are getting quite similar. The older fours are like the new three sized. Yeah, they do look really good. Purposeful, aggressive enough, without being too in your face ostentatious. So interior wise, well it's business as usual isn't it, Audi's been nailing these interiors for years, it doesn't feel dated at all and everything has still got that nice premium Audi Germanic feel to it. Okay, fair enough, if you place it next to a brand new RS3, maybe it's starting to show its age a little bit, but that brings me on to my next point, the value that these cars offer. If you go down to Audi today and you spec a brand new RS3, you're talking £70,000 for something like that with a few options added. One of these is going to cost you half that, even with that tuning done, to turn it into a little rocket ship. Anyway, enough talk, let's get this on the road, see what it's like. So initial impressions then, well it's all very civilised doesn't it, compared to something like my GTR, okay that's a car at the other end of the scale from this, but everything's so nicely damped and civilised and comfortable, it really is nice, you can imagine yourself doing an awful lot of miles behind the wheel of one of these and not feeling worn out at all. Now, something I always try and do in these videos is bring you a little bit of insight that you maybe haven't already heard, so that's more challenging than you might think when a car is as well reviewed and as popular as the RS3, but I'm going to try my best here. So here's one thing, this car is on a fixed damper, so the fixed damper is from the factory opposed to the more popular Magride, I suspect most of them probably came with that Magride. Now this is one area that Audi tends to excel in. I used to have an R8, be part of the R8 community, and you've seen it with them. A lot of owners would abandon, they'd get rid of that unreliable Magride system in favour of the fixed shockers because of one, it was much more reliable, and two, it was a perfect compromise between comfort and still being quite an involving drive. And honestly, I would put the RS3 in that same category. Those fixed dampers are a perfect compromise. Some might criticise it for being a little bit on the soft side, but honestly, I think here in the UK, where we have pretty imperfect roads, to be polite, pretty changeable weather, potholes and stuff, I think it's just about right. Car also sounds very good, but we'll get to that in a moment. Maybe over on European roads, where things are a little better, you could afford to go a little bit firmer, but in the UK, I think it's about right. All right, so it's now impossible to go any further without addressing that elephant in the room, that monumental five-cylinder engine. So what's it like? Well, I could describe it as fast, but you guys already know that. It's got 540 horsepower. It's a relatively small car. So yeah, it's fast. That's one way of describing it. But here is the biggest compliment that I can pay this car. And it is that even with 540 brake horsepower, it doesn't feel overpowered. I can't quite believe I'm saying that. We all know that Quattro system is good, but it's only half the story. It takes a well-sorted chassis and that slightly more supple suspension to be able to actually use that power. And honestly, you could be a complete numpty in this, bury your foot, and the car just sorts it out and you go down the road at a blistering pace. So helping us extract every single bit of that 540 horsepower is that seven speed DSG gearbox. And if you've watched any other reviews, you already know it's good. What can I add to it? Well, again, I'm gonna draw a comparison with my GTR for a moment. I know I'm gonna get comments below going, it's not the same kind of car, but it's kind of like my point of reference for a car that I'm driving all the time. And it helps me kind of differentiate what this is like. 
So what is that seven speed gearbox like? Well, there's one thing that it's doing and I find it quite unusual. I'm gonna try and describe it and show you guys what I mean here. But in the GTR, if you floor it, it basically breaks the power, it selects the gear, then the power comes back on. And these, it seems to be telepathically linked to the engine. It knows what I'm gonna do before I do it because when I floor it, it's as if the car accelerates into the gear and in doing so, it kind of spills the turbo. I'll try and show you what I mean here. So it means once that gear's in, there's no delay, there's no turbo spill, you are just gone. It feels light years beyond what I've got in my GTR, to be honest. So onto the steering, what's that like? Well, unsurprisingly, it's a little bit on the numb side. In other words, there's not vast amounts of feedback coming through it all the time. Now here's my thoughts on it, and I'd love for you guys to comment below with what you think as well. And that is everything about this car, the feel of it, all the individual characteristics of it, everything is very, very refined and feels quite insular. If I had a steering wheel which was bobbing and weaving and picking up every single dimple and crease in the road surface, it would feel completely out of place. It just wouldn't be fitting of the character of this car whatsoever. Car reviewers love to pick up on this and make out that every single car should have vast amounts of feedback and be shaking about in your hands. What are your thoughts on it? Do you think this is something that Audi engineer in intentionally, that it's a little bit on the numb side, or do you think it's a problem? Do you think it's something that they should address and try and add more steering feel? Love to hear your thoughts there. Now, before we start to get our concluding thoughts together here and draw to a bit of a conclusion, I think it's important to talk to my friend Grant, who's actually owned this car for the last little while. Being honest, I've only driven it a handful of times, including with you guys here today. So I think he's maybe able to give us a wee bit more insight into what it's been like day to day. That was funny. So what's it been like to live with then? So this is more of a weekend car for me. Um, it's a great going wee car. The map's really transformed it. Recommend it to anyone. Get the mods done properly and uh, Map. It's a different car once it's mapped. Did it not feel as quick before it was mapped then? Did it... it felt quite slow actually before it was mapped. Uh, very laggy. The gearbox really needs mapped as well. Really brings it to the Astronic. Didn't uh, change the power at all? So was it more lower end and it became more top end when it got mapped? It's more linear I think. Right. Um, a bit higher in power. Pops and bangs. Can not beat it? So a lot of you probably don't know, you'll find it on the channel if you go looking. But Grant used to have uh, one of the old 5 litre V10 Gallardos. Uh, a bit of a fall from grace, I know. Oh, yeah, only kidding. <laughs> Hard times. <laughs> but, I mean, I know it's a different kind of car, I know it's a different price bracket altogether, but how would you compare the two? Is this up there in terms of handling and power? And Because obviously, that was, what, 500 brake, this 540? So, aye, there's no competition that the RSD would run rings around the Gallardo. See, that blows my mind. Aye, it does, aye. It's, the Glardo is quite slow. Let's just be brutally honest here. I find that the handling on the RS3 is much better as well. It's a more... I say it's a more reliable car as well. I mean, it is. It's not Italian. And it's um, not 15 years old It's either, not 15 fair, years so. old either, aye. Um, Performance-wise, blows it out of the water. It's not even close. But it still kind of beat the old naturally aspirated V10 manual. It's a Lambo at the end it's of the day. It's a Lambo at the day, aye. That's the thing that blows my mind. I said at the beginning of this video, obviously we grew up with F430s, Gallardos, these fully-fledged supercars, and nowadays they wouldn't be able to match what we've really got close. in a hatchback or small saloon. For not for not a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's it it probably yeah, a lot of money. Pick one for about 40 grand. What about the tuning? Can we disclose how much money it costs to get it yeah, going like this? Aye, so what are we looking at there? Uh, about twelve hundred pound, I think, all in for gearbox and engine map. That's not including the intercooler, uh, downpipes, exhaust. Probably, I think it's probably like a probably a four grand package all in. About four grand. Aye, uh, supplied and fitted. Um, I know a few local garages do a bolt on drive in drive out stage two for around four grand. Um, well worth it. Yeah, I'd say so. Finally, I think I already know the answer to this, but would you recommend it if someone's thinking about going for one of these? Should they do it? Recommend it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant car. Uh, 10 out of 10. 
I wouldn't have fault it. It's never let me down once. Um, bet a lot of cars as well. Surprised a lot of cars. Um, obviously, we're not the GTRs. <laughs> Can't keep up with them, unfortunately. So I think a natural conclusion is starting to present itself here. What the RS3 is, is a stag do at a spa. It's got all the components to get a bit out of hand, a bit unwieldy, but it's in this very grown up, very refined package. Technically, it's astounding. I'm not sure there's a supercar out there today. We'd keep up with one of these things on a wet back road with ease. They'd really need to work to keep up with it. Is it an inspiring, involving hair raising drive? No but it shouldn't be condemned because it isn't, because it never promised or tried to be. What it is and what it succeeds at is being an extremely capable, extremely impressive performance car. Now, if you're in the market to buy one, click in the top right hand corner now, and I'll show you all the common problems, all the things that tend to go wrong to help you get the best one possible. Well rounded, very, shit. Refined. Refined. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting good outtakes at least. Right, third time lucky here. It's got all the components to be a bit unwieldy, get a bit out of hand, but it's in this very grown up, very sort of, oh shit, I forgot my word. Very. Why it's hard to understand.